In this presentation, we will discuss the addition and multiplication properties of asymptotic notations. So, let's get started with this lecture and let's see the topics. The first topic is asymptotic notations addition property. First, we will discuss the addition property of asymptotic notations and then we will move to the next topic where we will discuss the multiplication property of asymptotic notations. Let's get started with the first topic asymptotic notations addition property. This is the addition property of asymptotic notations. Fn plus Gn is big O of maximum of Fn, Gn. Whatever is the maximum of these two functions will be considered as the big O of Fn plus Gn. Why is that the case? Let's try to understand this through an example. Let's take this example. Let's say Fn is n and Gn is n square. Let's try to prove this property through this example. According to this property, Fn plus Gn must be big O of maximum of Fn, Gn. Let's first add these two functions, that is n and n square. We will get the expression n plus n square. And n plus n square is big O of n square because n square is the dominating term in this expression. And we know the growth rate is always decided from the dominating term. Out of n and n square, the growth rate of n square is bigger. Hence, we can say n plus n square is big O of n square because n square is the upper bound of n plus n square. How can I say n square is the upper bound of n plus n square? Here we just have n square and here we have n plus n square. This is because we can always multiply n square in the right hand side by some bigger constant and make the right hand side greater than the left hand side. Hence, we can say n plus n square is big O of n square. So, it is clear that fn plus gn is big O of maximum of fn, gn. What is maximum of fn, gn? The maximum of fn and gn is the dominating term. And we got the dominating term only within the big O notation. That is why the addition property is true. Because fn plus gn is indeed big O of maximum of fn, gn. Or we can say fn plus gn is big O of the dominating term out of fn and gn. Now, what about the other notations? What can we say about the big omega and big theta notations? fn plus gn is also big omega of maximum of fn, gn. The reason is simple. If we see this example, here we have n plus n square and here we have n square. For c equal to 1, the right hand side is less than the left hand side. Hence, we can say n plus n square is big omega of n square. So, not only n plus n square is big O of n square, n plus n square is also big omega of n square. Therefore, from this example, we can say fn plus gn is big omega of maximum of fn, gn. Now, what about the theta notation? We know if big O and big omega are satisfied, then theta notation is automatically satisfied. Because maximum of fn, gn is acting as both the upper bound and the lower bound of fn plus gn. So, it is clear that fn plus gn is also theta of maximum of fn, gn. So, this is the takeaway of this topic. Understand if big O and big omega are satisfied, then big theta is automatically satisfied. So, with this we have understood the addition property of asymptotic notations. Now, let's move to the next property, multiplication property now. This is the multiplication property, fn times gn is big O of fn times gn. This property is quite simple to understand. fn times gn is big O or we can say fn times gn grows asymptotically bigger than fn times gn. Let's try to prove this property mathematically. For this, let's take an example. Let's say fn is n and gn is log n. 
If we multiply these two functions according to this property, then we will get n times log n or we can say n log n. fn times gn is n log n. According to this property, fn times gn must be big O of fn times gn. Here we can observe this is the only term. Hence, we can say n log n is big O of n log n. We can write this asymptotically like this. Why? Again, we can multiply n log n in the right hand side by some bigger constant and make it bigger than n log n in the left hand side. Therefore, we can say n log n is big O of n log n. Now, you might have guessed it already that for big omega notation also, the multiplication property is satisfied. Not only for big O notation, for big omega notation also, the multiplication property is satisfied. If we take this example once again, we can always multiply n log n by some constant between 0 and 1 in the right hand side to make it lesser than the n log n in the left hand side. Hence, we can say n log n is also big omega of n log n. So, fn times gn is also big omega of fn times gn. If big O and big omega are satisfied, then we also know that theta notation is satisfied. fn times gn is also theta of fn times gn. So, multiplication property is also satisfied for all the notations, just like the addition property. So, with this, we have understood both the properties, that is, addition and multiplication. So, with this, we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.